Hey everybody, um, I appreciate your patience with me getting out this year's shoe list. Um, it's a little late this year, but again, thank you for your patience. Um, for a physical therapist um, and for patients, I like to let you guys know a little bit about what I go through when I go and look at shoes in our local community. Um, please realize if you're outside of the state of Nebraska that there are different shoes that might also work for you as a patient or may work for you as a patient. And there's different criteria that um, I like to look at when I look at shoes. One is, with the heel counter of the shoe, is I like the shoe that it doesn't collapse in, that it's nice and firm. And the reason why this is so important is that you have a heel bone called the calcaneus for patients. And this heel bone has got to be stable when you and I go to walk or when we go to run. When we go to walk or run, if you have a stable heel, that allows our foot to turn out or go into supination or it allows the forefoot to be able to roll in and pronate like it's supposed to during walking or gait. If the heel is wobbly, then the whole entire foot will work, work and roll, and it won't just be the forefoot. So having a heel counter that is firm is very critical with our patients. The second thing that I like to look for with the heel is that the heel, if you press in here, that there's not a lot of lateral heel give. A lot of shoe companies like to make the outside of this heel have a little bit of give because when our foot goes to hit the ground, we tend to hit the outside of our foot first before we roll in. So they're trying to cushion that heel. Well, the problem is if that gives too much, then we're going to stay on the outside of our foot during the entire time that we want to run or walk, and that's not healthy. Remember, our forefoot has got to roll out and roll in, not stay rolled out. And in a postural restoration world, if you cannot fill an arch, you cannot shift into a contralateral or the opposite hip. So if you cannot fill a right arch, you cannot shift into a left hip. If you cannot shift into a left hip, you cannot rotate a trunk, and you cannot um, have normal range of motion of a neck. So feet are important in a PRI world. Second thing um, that I look for is I like to make sure that the bend of the foot bends only at the toe box and it doesn't collapse and bend at the middle part of the foot. When a bone, when a bone, <laughs> when a foot bends at the toe box, that's the normal bend of our foot. And what happens is sometimes this toe box can be really stiff, you guys, where it's hard to bend. If that's really stiff, your patients are going to overwork hip flexors, which can pull in the back and increase, increase back tension. If you have a shoe that bends in half, you're going to increase the likelihood of your patient possibly developing plantar fasciitis um, or a heel bursitis on the bottom of their feet because that's not the normal bend of a foot. So that's why I'm picky about shoes. The third thing I'm going to go through with you is there are some shoes, and I'm not trying to pick on Mizuno, but that's just one example, that this fits all the criteria if you look at it. It bends at the toe. Uh, it has a nice stable heel counter. It doesn't have a, lateral heel, a lot of lateral heel give, but the design of this shoe, can you guys see how the inside of the heel is stiff and the outside of the heel is thin? I don't like that. Because of the way this heel is designed, this here again is going to keep the patient or um, you as a patient on the outside of your foot the entire time that you walk or run. And the design of the donut of this heel is also going to reinforce that. Also, the outside of our ligaments on our ankle are weaker on the outside of our foot that are also going to keep us on the outside. So this is not a healthy design. I get a lot of patients with this type of shoe they get a lot of knee pain and shin splint pain because they are not able to supinate and pronate during the gait cycle with this type of shoe. So I added that, if you see on the bottom of your shoe list this year, I added a picture of that for you guys to understand with all the things um, that are not going to be good for a postural restoration patient going through a PRI program and things that are going to help um, complement our program to help our patients to be able to reciprocally and alternate and function. If you go up here, you have a stability category, a neutral category, and a motion control category. 
I try really hard to give, not every shoe is going to work for every patient. We're all different. A shoe I might take might be completely different than the shoe that Julie down the street would take or the shoe that Kathy might take. And so I really, um, as a patient, please make sure that you are neutral with your physical therapy objective test that your physical therapist does with you. Or if you're a physical therapist to know if a shoe works well for your patient, can they walk around in a clinic and maintain neutrality with PRI tests? If they can, that's not a good shoe for them. Wash them how they walk. Can they supinate and pronate correctly during a walking cycle like they're supposed to? Can they move their arms or rotate a trunk the way that they're supposed to without rotating through a neck? These are all different things that I look at. On the outside of here, I start a couple of shoes that have a little bit of lateral heel give. It's not a lot, but it is a little bit that I would take caution with using that type of shoe with someone that has a lot of tibia varum or bull leggedness or if they have ankle laxity or if they've had an ankle trauma, you might want to caution putting them in the and a shoe that has a lot of lateral heel give. I added a Nike shoe for the first time this year. I added the Brooks Adrenaline back in this year. Um, so take a look at it. Some of the shoes are also going to be changing in June, so I'll be updating the list at that time. The foundation is still going to be around, so do not let your hearts be troubled. The Asics Foundation and the Asics Fortitude are my favorite shoes that I use with a lot of my patients here in the clinic. And I really like the Brooks Glycerin for patients that have a PRI type of orthotic. Those are my top three shoes that I really like. But remember, every shoe is different for everybody. If you have questions, you can let me know. But I hope this video um, helps to kind of explain things. And I wish you a lot of great luck and have a great spring.